Great. Okay, I'll make a start. Uh, thank you very much to everybody for joining, um, either joining us live or catching up on YouTube at a later date. Um, today's bite size is just a, a short one. It's going to be about half slides and half live demo. And I'm going to talk through some of the tools that we use for code linting, uh, on specifically code style linting. So I'm not going to talk about the NF core lint commands in this talk. That's uh, kind of there's other bite sized talks specifically about that. This is this is more about the general use tools that we use for for linting code style. What do I mean by that? So uh, as I'm sure anyone who's done even a little bit of development work will know, uh, how you format your code is a contentious issue. <laughs> um, I started looking for a good like GIF or means to put in. Of course, XKCD came gave up, gave up the goods with some uh, some rather excellent insults <laughs> about code style. And uh, once I started, there's just it's a pretty deep trove actually. There's a lot of a lot of good comics out there about about um, edition Christie's about code formatting. And any of you who watched. Uh, uh, Silicon Valley on TV or other TV programs will be familiar with the tabs v spaces argument. Um, anyway, <laughs> the point being here is that uh, everyone has quite individual views on how code should be formatted. Not the content of the content of a code, but just the white space and how things are formatted and how things are done. Um, this is where code formatters come in, and the idea of code formatters or linters is that they set the style you're going to use. They decide how things should be formatted, and that means that you don't have to. It's good because they mean that you kind of free up a little bit of, of space in your brain for it. You're not kind of having to think about whether to use single quotes or double quotes, uh, how much indentation you should be using, things like this, because it just happens. Uh, and the other thing is that they're really good for projects where there are lots of contributors like NF Core. Because then we have lots of different people coming in and working on the same single code base. Everyone has their own idea of how things should be formatted. And uh, if ever you've come in and read someone else's code, you'll find that sometimes it's very difficult to read through that code if it's not in a style that you're used to. Code formatters force everyone to write code in exactly the same way. And that makes it much easier to collaborate together. And also means that when you change things, uh, the, the differences in the code, the code diffs that we see on GitHub are just the important things, the actual code that you're changing. And we don't get lots of spurious diffs where uh, white space is being changed. So yeah, code formatters think about style so that you don't have to. I've put the little asterisks down in the corner here that they're highly addictive. Um, I think code formatters are a bit like uh, wearing a seatbelt in a car or gloves in a lab or using Git to manage source control. Um, once you start using code linters, you'll find that it's very difficult to work without them. <laughs> if I, I've been using them for a year or two now, and now I find it really irritating whenever I'm, whenever I'm in a project that doesn't have them. Uh, I notice all these little inconsistencies and uh, I find myself wasting time on thinking about this. So once you start using code linters, I suspect that many of you will, will find it difficult to go back. I hope so anyway. So uh, these are the different languages within NF Core that you'll come across, um, apart from the obvious next flow. Um, we've got a bunch of Python code, uh, especially in the NF Core tools package. Um, also some scripts within pipelines. We've got a lot of documentation written in Markdown. Uh, we primarily use YAML for uh, configuration files, also JSON. And then on the, the website, we've got a few kind of extra tools, languages, web, websites written with PHP, CSS, and, uh, and HTML. And these are the, the main languages here that I'm going to talk about today. Um, and there's not very many tools that we use. We use basically two tools, maybe three. Python, we format using a tool called Black, which is the most popular and commonly used code linter for, for Black, uh, code formatter for Python, uh, used by a lot of big projects now. And it was Black that got me into this in the first place. Um, and then we use a tool called Prettier to do everything else. Uh, until recently, until the last release of tools, uh, we used to use a tool called Markdown Lint for Markdown and YAML Lint for YAML. And we had sort of numerous different individual instances here, but we replaced those in the last major release uh, of, of tools. And now we just use Prettier for everything. So if you did a, a pipeline sync recently to a template, you'll see quite a lot of uh, minor changes, things like quotes and things like that in your YAML files. And that was because 
we switched to using Prettier and are now using that, that standard. And then the little mouse down in the bottom corner is a, a tool, tool called Editor Config, uh, which is basically a generalized, well, it's a standard uh, where um, that tells your code editors what the code style is for a project. And, and both of these other tools tie into that config as well. Uh, and it's also a standalone tool that's generic for any language. Uh, that one does stuff like indentation should be at multiples of two. So if you try and indent any code with a multiple of three, then it will complain, stuff like that. Okay, so these are the three projects we're gonna talk about and these are their websites. Um, they all come with uh, command line tools. So they all come with a, with a command line package that you can run uh, that look very similar. Um, with black, you can do black, minus minus check, prettier, minus minus check. Uh, and then edit, edit config checker, that's all is specifically for checking. And you just give it a bunch of files. So normally it would be asterisk for all of the files in the projects. Uh, black and pretty especially will just ignore any files that they don't recognize. Uh, and they will go through and they will check up the syntax of all of your different files and they'll throw a warning if anything doesn't conform to the style that they like. What is particularly good about these tools and one of the main reasons we switched to Prettier recently uh, is that these commands also will fix it for you. So you don't have to just go and look up every single line like we used to have to for, for markdown lengths, like our oh, line 432 is using the wrong style of bullet point. Now you can just do prettier minus minus right go and pretty will run through and it will format everything for you and just fix it. That's great. That saves a lot of time. Okay, so before I go on to the live uh, demos, I'm just gonna walk through some stuff. Um, I, uh, there's three main ways that you're likely to come into contact with these tools. Uh, for many of you, the first, first way you'll come into contact with them is through the uh, continuous integration tests. So you'll push a commit or you'll open a pull request and you'll have a failure on the CI. You'll have a little red cross uh, and it will say that Prettier failed. And it probably says something like, oops, forgot to format your files with Prettier. Uh, and usually pull requests will not be merged until that turns into a little green tick. So that might be the first time you see this and that might be how you ended up on this talk. Um, one of the first places that we might go to to then to fix this problem is you can run these tools on the command line. Like I just showed, they have commands, so then you can go back to your code place, run prettier minus minus right, which will fix the problem, and then push another commit. And then hopefully that red cross will turn to a little tick. Um, but really the best way to use these tools is to have them set up in your text editor, in your code editor. Uh, and when that's done properly, they will run automatically every time you save a file, every time you edit anything. And you don't ever have to think about running them because just everything is automatically formatted properly. So that's that's the best way to work really. And once you've set that up once, you can just forget about this and it just works. Right, let's see if I can screen share a little portion of my screen. Over here. Right. Hopefully everyone can see that bit of screen and the Zoom throws everything around my window. Um, so wave at me if you if you can't see what a website that I'm looking at for the black documentation. Good. <laughs> um, so uh, just to show you the websites for these tools, this is the black uh, documentation. You basically don't ever need to look at this, uh, but just so you know, this is kind of what it looks like. If you Google Python black, you'll find it. Um, this is a website for uh, Prettier. And again, it kind of talks about how it works and uh, the different languages it supports uh, and the different code editors that you can, has integrations with, which is kind of basically all of them. Um, so if you're using something other than VS Code, which is what I'm going to show you in a minute, you can go along here and, and you know install a plugin for Atom or whatever else. Um, yeah, and it's got quite good documentation. Uh, and the final one is, is editor config, which um, is just, like I say, it's a way of sort of standardizing config files across editors and projects for things like what type of new lines to use, uh, character encoding, what indent size use and stuff like this. And certainly Prettier will find these editor config files and load these settings from that. So they kind of integrate together. Um, a lot of editors have built in support for editor config and some you need a plugin for. So again, you can come here and get your, your Vim plugin for editor config. 
And basically then that this, if this file is in your project, it will override your normal local settings. Um, right, and then uh, I said it ran on continuous integration. So just to give you a look of where this is, uh, this was within the pipeline template and there's a file in the GitHub workflows called linting.yaml. Uh, so just so you can see, this is running editor config here, uh, and this is the exact command it runs. So if ever you want to emulate the CI tests that are running uh, on, on GitHub, you can run these commands yourself uh, on your local system, and you should hopefully get the same results as long as you've got the same versions of the tools installed. So you can see it's just running prettier check um, and editor config. Uh, and if we look in the main tools package where we've got a load of Python code, uh, you'll see it's also running black, black and black, and you can see it's running, uh, it's actually running a, a, a GitHub action for, for running black. Okay, so I'll just do a quick uh, kind of live demo now. I've got the, uh, the RNA-seq pipeline open here, and I've just made a couple of uh, basic kind of dummy changes. If I do uh, git diff, I wonder if I can do git dunk, it's a new tool I found the other day. Okay, uh, so you can see, um, see here that I've just made a few changes. I've added something to a change log file here, uh, and I've just made some white space changes to this YAML file just for the, the purposes of this demo. Um, now, right away, you can see that, um, so these are the changes here, the GitHub changes. You can see it like looks a bit weird, so it's probably not surprising that this is going to fail, but this is a valid YAML file. Um, this is the NF core config file, so it's um, customizing a bit about how the NF core tools work, um, the linting tests and stuff. Um, but all of this is valid YAML. I haven't actually changed any of the real kind of meaning of this file uh, and it should have run fine. But you can see my indentation is a bit wonky here uh, and I'm kind of using some single quotes here and whatnot. So if I, I've turned everything off at the moment, so if I hit, hit save, uh, then, uh, then I can do prettier check. And this will check all the YAML markdown files. And sure enough, it says uh -uh, there's something wrong here. The NF core, that YAML file has got a warning and also a change log where I added uh, a little note about what I've done here. So I know something's wrong. And if I had pushed my code anyway, uh, I would get a warning on GitHub from the GitHub actions. Uh, so I'm just going to commit this now. So now you will be able to see what, what changes after this. OK. So I'm in VS Code, so I can run um, prettier, right? And that goes through all the different files it recognizes. And you can see uh, if I do git status, that it has actually modified these two files. So uh, you'll see I did git add first. So I committed those changes first. And I think that's good practice before you run code linters is to commit your actual changes, what you're thinking about uh, first. Um, and then if you're going to make big linting changes, you can do that as a separate commit. And it's very easy to see the, the diff of, of what's changed in case you're nervous about it. Later on, you, you get used to running it and you won't need to do a separate commit, but just, just at the beginning. Uh, and then if I look at the diff, you'll see that um, both of these files have been changed. And you can see it's basically kind of messed around with the, some of the formatting and the white space. And sure enough, in this file now, all the indentation is fixed. It's all using two space indentation everywhere. My single quotes would appear are converted to double quotes uh, and all the extra line breaks were removed. And if I'd had any like trailing spaces at the end of lines like that, then it, uh, they would have been removed. Over in the change log, you can see my markdown now correctly has a blank line after this heading. And my bold text has been changed from double underscores and italics with asterisks to the standard that we use, which is underscores for italics and double asterisks for bold. Minor changes didn't make any difference to the actual contents of the file, uh, but now we have a nice consistent usage of Markdown and YAML. Okay, great. Um, if I um, if I kind of hang on, if I just do it in the browser, and then here we go. So if I just put this back to how it was, and I will show you the other way of doing it. So say this. Um, I said, so that's on the command line, but I said the best way to do it is with the, um, with the browser, with the code editor. Now to do this, I'm gonna use a couple of plugins with VS Code. And like I say, you can do this with, um, with basically any editor. 
Um, so for VS Code, if you go to the marketplace or you just go to the extensions tab here, you can search for Prettier and there's a few ones, but it's the obvious big one that's got 20 million installs. <laughs> uh, and basically you just hit install there and things should work. The same goes for editor config, that there's a plugin for VS Code. Um, you may not need this. Um, and then black is kind of a bit more complicated because it's actually built into VS Code. So you need the Python add-on. Uh, and then if you go into settings and type black, you'll see that the uh, Python formatting provider, you want to set that to black so that it runs black whenever you edit Python code. If you're never going to edit Python code in the tools package, don't worry about that. Um, okay, so I've got them installed and set up. Now, uh, if you're doing this on some other project that's outside of NF Core, it's important to note, we have a few files in, in the root of the repo here, which are helping us out. For uh, the edit config, tool, this guy, we have an edit config config file that says that sets everything up, says what the indent line should be and things. Uh, and for prettier, we have a prettier ignore file, which tells it to, it's like a git ignore file, tells it to ignore certain stuff. And a prettier RC file, which has some settings. Here we just specify that we want the width to be 120. I can't remember what the default is, but it's quite narrow. Uh, so we don't change very much. So there are some config files in there. Um, and then once that's installed, I can go to a command palette here. Uh, so that was command shift P for me because I'm on the Mac. Uh, and you can see there's an option of saying format document. So I can run that and poof, done. Uh, so that's a bit better than command line. It's still not great because I still need to actually remember to run that in command all the time. And we're trying to get away from having to remember anything. So if I go back into settings here, if I look for format on save, there's the magic tick button here, editor format on save. And this tells VS Code to do what it says, to format your files whenever you hit save. So now if I go to um, go to the, the change log markdown file and make some change, if I hit save, you'll see that prettier ran and it, it fixed this uh, extra line break and it fixed the markdown here. And I can put a bunch of extra training spaces in here, uh, which are there, and if I hit save, they disappear because Prettier runs every single time I hit save. And this then is the state that I recommend you run in, where every time you hit save, everything just is formatted automatically uh, and you don't need to worry about it and all the tests should pass. Okay, uh, final, I'm running a bit late, so final little bits. Uh, sometimes Prettier breaks or doesn't do what you want it to do, or there's some specific reason that um, you want to ignore stuff. I said that there's this pretty ignore file. Uh, one of the things that we ignore is actually like uh, in the new new release that's going to come out for, for the template any, any minute is this email template file because this actually broke because of prettier. So we've got groovy code mixed into HTML and so that confuses it. So there are sometimes legitimate reasons to ignore the, the code linters. Uh, if you want to ignore an entire file, you can stick the file name into the prettier ignore file. Uh, and if you look at the, the, um, the prettier documentation, you will see that there's the section about ignoring code. Uh, it talks about that file that I just mentioned, and it also says that you can use um, the, uh, keywords within the file. Basically, you make a comment and you say pretty ignore, and that will just uh, ignore a chunk of that file, basically. So there is a way to do this. This just ignores that one line, uh, and then pretty will continue to pass. But of course, this is kind of exceptional use case only. Most of the time, you don't need to do this, and you should just let Prettier do its thing. Right, uh, final couple of slides just to wrap up. Then, um, screen. Come on. How are you? There we go. Um, Yes, a final mention. I mentioned YAML and Markdown. Those are two of the biggest uh, offenders here. And also um, like Jason and a few others. But of course, wouldn't it be amazing if we could do this with Nextflow code? And we had a standard about indentation after inputs and output blocks and script blocks and everything. Um, those of us who have worked <laughs> for a while on, and especially who are used to code linters and using them and like them, uh, would absolutely love this, but it doesn't exist yet. 
However, uh, Prettier can hand, handle uh, plugins. That's actually how the website does the, the PHP code. It's, it, it's an, like a sort of semi unofficial plugin. Uh, and there is some interest within the NF Core and Nextflow communities to build something like this. So the other day we were talking about this, and Edmund actually kicked off a new Slack channel called Prettier Plugin Nextflow. So there's nothing really to see there yet, but if you're interested, and especially if you have any experience in doing this or would like to help out or just get involved, go and check out that Slack channel and, uh, and join in because please, please, I want it. <laughs> and I imagine uh, you'll make a lot of friends uh, if you can make this work uh, and make all, NF Core is all about standardization and, and best practices. And, and this would really be uh, icing on the cake for that. Right, with that, I'm happy to take any questions, be it about linting or anything else, you can hit me. Uh, I, I, there's no one moderating today, so uh, I will just keep an eye on the Slack chat. There's a couple of things in there. Um, and, uh, or just unmute yourself, um, I believe. So uh, there's a question about what, what do I use for Nextflow at the moment? Um, yeah, editor config. That's one of the main reasons that editor config is in there. Uh, that's a general use tool. It's very, very simple. Like I say, it just checks like the, the indentation basically kind of uh, two space, four space. Um, and that's about it. So it's still possible to kind of do pretty variable formatting, but at least it's, it's something. And like I say, hopefully we'll have a prettier plugin one day. Um, and this asks, have I ever come across that black introduces bugs in my Python code? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I quite like that actually uh, when I hit save, if I don't see things move around, that usually means that my Python code is invalid and, and there's a syntax error somewhere because black can't run on it. So it's actually the other way around. I think black probably saves me from bugs by alerting me early to the fact that there might be something, something fishy going on. Uh, I've never seen it introduce a bug. No, sometimes you sometimes you might not agree with the choices it makes, especially black. It it defaults to a very narrow column width, so it breaks loads of stuff over over lots and lots of lines quite quickly unless you you, you change that default. But um, but I've never seen it actually introduce errors or bugs. Moritz says that he likes the shorter eighty or eighty eight character line length. <laughs> yeah, this is personal preference. Um, I think that we've got it set to 120 at the moment, um, partly because that's what I have everything else set up to when I came into this. Um, there's a, a, with the configs, so you'll see there's a kind of a couple, one or two weirdish bits. Um, I don't know if who was who was paying paying attention might have might have really spotted it. Um, I'll go back to it again in this window. Um, so if we go to the pipeline templates template and go to the editor config file you'll see here that we've got um some stuff to be set up to be indent size uh four so that that's that's all files so that would be like nextflow and config files and everything indent size four um and then some stuff we've got indent size two um and then some stuff we've got like modules we're kind of unsetting a bunch of stuff so that it's not clobbered but yeah you know, we're doing some stuff here and and some of these choices you might be like well why are we using two for some files and four for some files, that doesn't seem very consistent. And it's the same for line length. Um, there's a pretty simple answer with that. It's uh, because we tried to minimize how many changes would be introduced into the code base when we started using these files. Um, so JSON was already set as four, I think. So we tried to stick with four so that it didn't break everything. Um, so we tried to actually minimize the number of changes which were introduced by these tools when we started using them and stick. If we already had some kind of standard, we tried to stick with that. Uh, yeah, line length, you can be set in editor config. I think that's where it might be where we're setting it. I'm not sure. Okay. That's nice, actually. If we can set the prettier line length in editor config, then maybe we can just completely get rid of a prettier um, config file. That'd be nice. Any more questions? I should check Slack. Great. Well, thank you for sticking with me on what could be a bit of a, a dry topic, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, useful set of tools for everybody. Um, and as always, if you have any questions or problems, please jump into the NF Core Slack, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. <laughs>